welcome Rabbitohs members and supporters to the greatest show going around. That's right, it's grand final week and the Rabbitohs Insider is back for the season finale. And to kick it off as per usual, it's the Playmakers with Sato and Ello, proudly brought to you by Zoom Video Communications. Hello and welcome once again to the final episode of the season for the Playmakers. Uh, brought to us by Zoom Video Communication. And joining me again, like he has every to- every week this season, is the last person to hold the NRL trophy aloft for the Rabbitohs, the great John Sutton. How are you, John? I'm good, Marcus. What a week it is. Yeah, it's fantastic, mate. It's, um, well, you know what it's like. We'll get to that a bit later today, but you've been there before yourself, obviously, and and, and come, out, come out on top of the world. And, um, you know, our game on the weekend against Manly put us in a great place to be able to do that again. What were your thoughts on the game against the, the Sea Eagles? Yeah, I thought it was a great win. I think, um, you know, we really set the platform early and, uh, you know, the boys end up running amok there for a bit. Um, obviously, the last 15 minutes or so, they've run in a few tries, but um, it doesn't matter. We're there, the big dance, and um, yeah, can't wait. I can only imagine what it's like with 15 minutes to go, you're leading 32 to 6. Is your mind a little bit on next week so I don't get hurt, so I don't miss the game? Yeah, that's it. I think, um, you know, the boys put the cue in the rack, but all the work was done. And, um, you know, it's exciting. You know, 80 minutes away from, you know, holding the trophy up. So uh, I can't wait. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great experience, mate. And um, we're up to, it's 11 weeks today since we left Sydney and came up here in the, in the Queensland. I mean, there's been some really positive parts about it. Obviously, the weather's been good and we haven't been as locked down as we would have been back in Sydney. But just the bonding of the team together is leading really well in, into Sunday's game. You must remember back in 2014, what was the week like leading in and the time you spent with your teammates? Yeah, it was, um, it was awesome. I think, you know, you got to enjoy the week, take it day by day. And, um, you know, early on in the week, it's, you know, pretty cruisy. Um, you know, a lot of stuff with the families and media and whatnot. But, you know, as the week goes on, we start preparing really well and, um, you know, it's just a great week. And obviously last time we were in the grand final, we had that grand final luncheon and it was, it was awesome to have my mum there. You know, she got up and she was ripping in her tear. And so, <laughs> yeah. no, it's an exciting week. And, um, you know, I'm just, you know, looking forward to this game. It really is. And um, I've been really happy with the lead in for us. Uh, like we've had, had a little bit of a rest and, a bit like 2014, the team we're playing had to play every weekend in the finals. Plus, they didn't rest any players in the last week of the competition. I mean, that may mean something on the weekend, I'm not sure. But as a player, what do you think of it today? Um, you know what, it's a GF, so they'll be up for it. Um, we'll definitely be up for it. Um, we just got to keep doing what we're doing, execute our game plan, you know, play for the full 80. I think the key for us is our completions and time of possession, sir. I think it's, um, you know, that's important to us. That's the way we play. And, you know, we get that over 80, 85 percent or around that mark. I think we'll be hard to beat. Yeah, obviously, it's a big, big part of the game, the completion rate. Obviously, last week we did a good job, you know, kicking to the corners and keeping turbo there. So, um, you know, nothing changes for us. We just got to go out and do it. And they're good. We've, we've had a you know, nine day break leading in this week. Uh, I know Reno had a, had a twinge in the in the game. It was a great effort for him to play last week. Uh, he's having like, he's just doing white stuff at training. He'll come and join the boys on Thursday. So he will have had, you know, a good five or six days with physio and, you know, recoup, recuperation to get him ready. So he's had a massive influence on us the last, particularly the last six weeks. Yeah, no, Adam's been great. Um, obviously, leaving us at the end of the year, but, you know, his heart and soul's here and, you know, he's going to be doing everything on Sunday. And I thought he had a great game. Obviously, he didn't do much of the kicking. Cody took over. And um, he just had to do what he had to do with the ball. And, um, yeah, no, it's going to be a great game. and Can't wait for it, eh? We had our fan day yesterday uh, up here. And, you know, there's probably 500 people. Might have been a few more from... Um, up here in South East Queensland. It's great to see all the members out here. And uh, as we've said every week, that's what it's about. I mean, as we always talk about, 
who we do things for. Like obviously we do it for ourselves and our families, but there's always been a constant about our members and supporters and sponsors that have stuck with us over many years. And how did that affect you when you're playing? Yeah, obviously, you know, you want to do it for yourself, but you know, we've got the best supporter base, best members in the game. So you just got to um, ride off their energy and um, play with high energy and, um, you know, give them something to cheer about. And I'm sure the boys will. Exactly. I mean, both of us have been here when it was really tough at South, when we, you know, we didn't win many games. And it's, it seems a long time ago now, but, you know, in the in the history of the game, it's not that long long ago. But our supporters and even members stuck by us then too, didn't they? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you know, I went through those tough years where, you know, we're getting flogged, you know, most weeks. But you know, they always showed up and and cheered us on. And you know, that's why it's so great today because we can, you know, show them now that we're one of the top teams, the top team. Sorry, and um, you know, they got something to cheer about. Certainly have, mate. And like everyone asks on the day, oh, sorry, on the lead into the GF. Who want to know who's going to win? I think I know the answer to that one from you. Who's the Clive Churchill medalist? Oh, look, there's a number of players, you know, that. but I think Cody, I think the way Cody's playing, um, you know, with the structure around him and then he's just his natural ability to be in the right spot at the right time. And he showed that on the weekend for um, getting off the ground and pushing through on Cookie's kick. I think, um, you know, we need Cody to have a big game and I'm sure he won't let us down. It's funny, I spoke to Cookie about that the, uh, like yesterday, about the left foot kick. I said, did you hit? No, it was Cody. He said, no, but I heard someone and I could feel them there. He said, but, you know, nine times out of ten, you know it's Cody that's going to be there. So he said, I just put it in. So it was it was a great, great try. Yeah, it was. You know, that's what Cody brings. Is that, uh, you know, he's just a natural footballer and he knows where to be. And, um, you know, he also plays his structure, but that's the best footy he plays off the cuff. And when Damien's jumping out, and he's pushing in the holes. Yeah, exactly, mate. Well, I've got to thank you, Sato, for your presence every week on The Playmaker. Um, we're at the big dance now, the, the pointy end of the season. And the best thing for me is there's a lot of people have written us off and have, particularly when Latrell got suspended a few weeks back. But, uh, just the camaraderie and the fighting spirit that's synonymous with the Rabbitohs is in the squad here. And Wayne's been doing a great job with them. And, you know, I'm sure on behalf of you and myself, all the members and that, we wish the boys all the best on Sunday. And we look forward to another Premiership, number 22. Yeah, let's go, Marcus. Up the Rabbitohs. The Rabbitohs. Well, what a great day, ladies and gentlemen, for the South Sydney Rabbitohs in what is our grand final week as we line up ready for our 22nd Premiership. Here we are at Redfern Park in the heart of Randwick City Council, our heartland, uh, on the first day of construction of our new home here in Maroubra. Oh look, I think for us, I think one of the biggest things that I want to do is initiate running breakfast boot camps out of here as well so the kids can come and have a feed in the morning, do a little bit of physical activity and then you know, go to school, get them off to school on time. And then in the afternoons as well, I want to utilise the classroom to, to do homework hubs um, so we can support the kids. We do a lot of that at schools, but I think having a facility like this will enable us to do a whole lot more within the facility. Oh, I guess for South Cares, what it means is it gives us a facility to enable, which enables us to increase our capacity. Like, more than anything, like we're going to have a classroom here where we can actually bring some of those 18,000 kids that we see a year delivering key health messages into here and give them a tour of the facility. They can go and watch the boys train. It's, it's unbelievable what it means and what a difference it can make. And you know, just even shooting hoops, like the kids are just hanging out, it, it means a lot. I'd like to express my gratitude to the federal government, state government, Randwick City Council for its donation of the land, but also for the money they've expended to see this project become a reality. And above and beyond those great contributors, I'd like to make special mention of our members and fans who contribute each and every year to the prosperity of our club. We're now a leader in the NRL competition, not only on the field, but off the field. And I think this fantastic project epitomises just where the Rabbitohs are today. And for that, we're deeply grateful. Thank you. Thank you. 
Here's what you need to know about our grand final clash against the Penrith Panthers, proudly brought to you by whatif.com, proud travel partner of the South Sydney Rabbitohs. Amp up your at-home 2021 finals experience thanks to the Rabbitohs and What If. Each week of the finals, we'll be giving away one major prize, including a $250 What If voucher, a $200 food and beverage package, and a 2021 signed jersey, plus $50 What If vouchers to five runners-up. Enter now at rabbitohs.com.au forward slash what if dash finals. Here are some quick facts to watch out for before we take on the Panthers. For the past three seasons, South Sydney have had the joy of enjoying the game's most illustrious coach steering their side. After back-to-back preliminary finals, Wayne Bennett has finally got the Rabbitohs to the big dance and could make history by becoming the first coach to win three premierships with three different clubs. A phenomenal achievement in its own right. After falling short in last year's grand final, Ivan Cleary's Panthers won't have to look far for motivation. They know what it's like to lose a grand final and will be doing everything in their power to take out the title. After being thrown a lifeline by the club earlier this year, Sunday looks set to be Benji Marshall's last game in the NRL. If the rumours are true, he'll bow out as rugby league's highest capped Kiwi with 348 matches along with 31 tests to boot. Here's hoping he brings out that flick pass one last time. Another one of South Sydney's local products, Blake Taff, hasn't looked back since taking on the role of fullback in the absence of Latrell Mitchell. The last time these two sides met, he ran for 113 metres, set up a try and had his hand in two line breaks. Against Manly, he stepped it up a notch, running for 149 metres, setting up two tries and booted four conversions when called upon. If you're looking for a feel-good story, look no further than Blake Taff. He's South Sydney through and through, and this Sunday looks set to be his last in the red and green. After debuting in 2012, Reynolds has gone to feature in 231 matches along with some of the most memorable wins in recent history. In 2020, he was handed the reins by Bennett to captain the club and has left no stone unturned. Regardless of the result come Sunday night, there won't be a dry eye in sight. Remember, members get 15% off select hotels through whatif.com forward slash rabbitos. Use promo code rabbitos15 to enjoy these exclusive benefits. I'm known as the Phantom. Started in uh, 2014 in the week leading up to uh, what was then our first grand final in some 34 years. Um, And I thought it was a good way to um, you know, show the team and show the community how important that milestone was. So I started off by decorating my the front of my house and uh, people then started making requests. Um, and in that week leading up to the 2014 Grand Final, um, we did just under 100 um, rabbits on the road, as we called them then, and courtesy now of the family. People were offering, of course, to pay. Um, they felt obliged, I think, um, but we took uh, we took no money. Um, I did, um, you know, often wake up to a carton of beer on the front doorstep, which was, you know, very nice. We're very much encouraging people, um, if they feel um, that they have it in them, please make a contribution to South Cares. We're going to just keep painting bunnies um, until we can do no more. Um, if that comes with um, with some financial reward for South Cares, well, that's goodness. Um, but no, look, we're just going to um, we're going to soldier on and just uh, see if I can satisfy as many of those requests as I can. Mm-hmm.